I guess we're starting the video now if I want to show off. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we made a return to Molita Island after obtaining the Sun Key. This is the keyhole that it fit into. Or at least there was one down in the caves. And we made it to the entrance to the temple where the third and final spirit that'll let us find the ghost ship is being held. This time! Well, we've done the fire temple, we've done the wind temple, now it's time for the temple of earth! Courage. Courage is the third element in the trifecta. What a place, the temple of courage, huh? I bet the spirit of courage is here. Let's keep going, Link. But, but, but I'm the embodiment of courage, I promise. I've, I've saved the world, you know. Why don't any of you believe me? <laughs> well, this is an interesting take on things. Being the Temple of Courage, it's full of all sorts of death-defying traps and things that you would need a lot of courage in order to go through, hence these spike rails and having to weave between them. It's kind of a taste of what's to come. There's a blade trap. We're seeing lots of new hazards right away, and it's the sort of thing that this place is designed around. It's a pretty interesting design motif and not one that I can say is typically done because usually they just go for the straight element. So as much as I made fun of it, it's a pretty neat idea. Got a small key, guess they're making up for the fact that we only had one small key in the last dungeon, it was right at the very end. By placing one right here and so close to where we have to use it. I guess I could have jumped down, but no big whoop. This place is cool looking, I, I like this tablets on the walls and just the general look of the place. And again, it makes me wish that they had unique dungeon music for each and every dungeon because it goes such a long way into making these places memorable and interesting and really stick with you for a long time. Pearl necklace, that's a good treasure. I just wish that it had that because music is everything to me. It goes such a long way in making moments and games go and I can kind of see how, for some people, it might make a might make the different dungeons of Phantom Hourglass blend together in your mind after a while. Because, I mean, who can forget the first time that they heard the Water Temple music or something along those lines? I know that's not really a popular dungeon, but it does have really good music. These are new enemies, Moldorms! You gotta hit their very sore butts. How mean of you, I wouldn't want anyone doing that to me. You go out of range, and they will stop chasing you. You can either slash them with a sword three times, or you can hit them with a bomb once. I guess I'll showcase the other method. Because I wasn't having very good luck with the bombs there, even though you can usually throw them over them because how short they are. And that kind of furthers what I was saying before, how there's mold orms and mold worms. They do very different things. Next up, we make it to the basement floor. And we got these little stone blocks that just kind of move over this endless abyss. Very courage themed. There it is. Oh, and these things. Okay, these are weird. They are called shell beasts. They function identical to hard hat beetles from Link to the Past, which makes me think that's what they were going for. The only difference is that they aren't bouncy, instead they're metallic. It makes me think that it's just another Prima Guide incorrect name. Um, they're a pretty rare enemy. I thought that was going to stop for me. I showed courage and I paid for it with my beating heart. Good thing I have seven more. Six more. <laughs> I can't count. I hey said my strength was courage, not that it was mathematics. Uh, moving on up, we have these kind of sparky snake things. I don't actually know what these are called now that I think of it. I've never really thought of them to have names because they're more hazards and not enemies. But blade traps have them, and uh, I still refuse to accept those things in the first dungeon. They're called face lamps, so I guess they have names as well. I'll hit those, get some resources. Big monsters with big ears are hugely vulnerable to loud sounds. You veterans might know what it's talking about. Up, down, right, then left. It's not only the order for the switches nearby, it's the very order of the whole temple. So make note of it. It's also the very order of all video games. Seriously, who doesn't know? Well, it's I guess it's up, down, left, right a lot more than it's up, down, right, left. I feel like if there's ever an order of four directions in a video game that you have to guess, guess those four, guess either combination up, down, right, left, or up, down, left, right in any game, and you'll pretty much get it first crack every time. An ancient cannon ship part. I think that's our first alternate cannon that we've gotten. That's a cool one. Wow. Very happy about that. And the other one contains... Power Gem! I think that's eight now. Store it on the collection screen. You bet I will. It's easier to have courage and cross the void later if you note this path now. 
This is actually hidden. You can go through this without finding it if you didn't bomb the wall right there. Drew it pretty well, pretty accurately, and I think it has a little bit of character to it. I'm seriously patting myself on the back for drawing a line and an arrow. <laughs> it's just I've been drawing so much stuff badly lately, it felt good to not hate my first try. <laughs> uh, these are an endangered species, green choo-choos, which it begs the question why they're endangered, because they take it like a man. <laughs> wow, uh, let me show off your gimmick, please. I swear they're supposed to dodge your attacks and use the boomerang to make the... They're meant to dodge your attacks! That's the thing that makes them special, and they're not doing it! <laughs> Fine, we get a shortcut back to the entrance if it is needed, but it's not really needed because these places are short enough. And here, new enemy, Paul's voice! He already cowered in fear to my very loud sounds! These enemies are very big, and I think they actually hit for a whole heart of damage. They're one of my favorite obscure Zelda enemies, because they were in the very first game, where in our version they were weak to bombs, but in the Japanese version, we're weak to the microphone on the second controller for the Famicom, making it so that their big ears made them sensitive to loud sounds. It's clever that they gave us that tutorial that we don't have to yell whenever we have to make noise, we can just snap our fingers with the um, with the salvage arm that we obtained. So it kind of came, it came in at a good time, and I thought that was a really organic way of teaching us that, plus just kind of brought back an obscure enemy that I like. I've always thought it was really interesting trivia, and it's kind of nice that us American filth finally get to enjoy this enemy that was only a refined taste of the Japanese up to this point. We're gonna go up, and there's another new one. They're just piling them on tie. These are Beemos, the inconsistent enemy that I often complain about because sometimes you can beat them, sometimes you can't, sometimes their laser can easily be dodged, sometimes it can't. This time, they cannot truly be killed. Their lasers are very, very homing, difficult to avoid. They do keep moving in the uh, counterclockwise motion, so as long as you keep that in mind, they won't be able to shoot you if they're just barely looking too much counterclockwise um, away from you. See? Here I'm in its line of sight, but it's not shooting me because it can't move backwards, but I moved up too far! Nullifying my entire point. There we get a square crystal. Take it to the same shape pedestal. We gotta walk it. But again, the place where we have to walk it doesn't have any enemies near it, and it's right this way. It's maybe 20 paces over to it. Again, I don't hate the mechanic. I just find it a little bit baffling because it never challenges you in interesting ways or does anything kind of interesting with it where you have to balance carrying the key with doing that. I don't know, I don't mean to really complain too much, I'm just kind of saying that I do think it's a bit weird. Uh, Gossip Stone! How many chests do I have to look out for? Oh, what you see isn't always the stone-cold truth. For instance, take the wall between the tablets on the first floor. Mysterioso. But am I telling you the truth? Who knows? I knows, because I already found it. There's some beetles here to help you see which way is the right way even if you haven't taken note of the path, so it's not really that hard to navigate. They also put them in good places where you gotta make the turns. Go up, go over, go down, and out. What do you say? You're gonna be the chest one, aren't you? Boing oing, the number of chests here. Three! This room barely has any floor to it. That's a lot of treasure per dirt particle ratio. <laughs> Give me this! The bow and arrow! Tap the touch screen and release to fire, similar to a pull string. Keep your stylus on the touch screen to aim and look around. Right away, there's an eyeball, you shoot it. Good, good. And then, there's also, oh, Moldorm. Uh, uh, come on, you were, you were barely shielding your butt with your face. That's not fair, and that sounds really funny, actually. Uh, you hit these crystals with your arrows, and it redirects them in the direction that it's facing. Hit it with the sword, change the direction. Don't do it that way, because you'll be shooting yourself in the head, and that's not a nice way to treat yourself. By doing that, that'll hit that switch from that far away, and we're seeing that there's some pretty interesting applications of this thing right away with redirecting arrows and making them do new things. Also, in addition to bombs, Arrows one-shot the Moldorms. Very good way of dealing with them, though I do personally like throwing the bomb overhead whenever possible. Boing oing, the crystal needed here is the very same you needed elsewhere. Retrieve the crystal, then put it in place here. Are you gonna be the one? Oh. 
Yes, they go down, hide in their... I almost said ink, this is not Splatoon, but it's a very similar concept. And then you can do that. Hit this eye. I said hit this eye. And we open the way back to the, to the crystal. With those green choo-choos, I believe that's the last one we are ever going to see is the one that I just killed, which is kind of disappointing for how they're supposed to be and how they're supposed to teach you about the importance of projectiles. I want to talk to you about this particular design of choo-choo and one of my favorite pieces of Zelda trivia in general. Like many a brilliant voice clip that appeared in The Wind Waker that is absent from this game, the choo-choos had voices where they're like, I'll, I'll play it for you right now rather than just do an impression. If it slowed down and played backwards, you hear this. <laughs> it's just two Japanese men arguing, and it's beautiful. I don't know what they're saying, but it's just, it's so good. <laughs> I... <laughs> Personally, I think that listening to people swearing in other languages is an art form that I'm very much a connoisseur and someone who appreciates it. My personal number one taste is hearing grandmas swearing in Spanish. <laughs> it's just so nice hearing people getting heated in a language you don't understand, and it's, it's so funny just that they hid that in the game. And it's yet another example of why those voice clips really should have been carried over, and I don't know why they weren't, but they carried over the, hey, listen, they carried over that one just fine, and... Not any of my favorites from Wind Waker. Oh well. Not trying to compare the games too much, just trying to talk about like this little bit of trivia that is relevant to those particular enemies. Uh, oh! Uh, come on! You're a flying unit, arrows get bonus damage against you, come on! I think they still die in one hit to the sword regard- Less. Hitting the second eye switch causes a chest to appear. We'll get that momentarily as we are able to fit it into our busy schedule. And I'd like to give an update from the last dungeon where I said that I really miss battery life being- OH! POWER GEM! Why yes, battery life was very power gem in the early 2000s. Uh, the start of this dungeon was the very first time that my light turned red and I had to begin charging it. So that gives an idea of just how much playtime you used to get out of one charge and how, you know, kids of today, they don't know how good we had it back in my day, back when- there was no 3DS, there was just 1DS. This feels so old. <laughs> There's, uh, oh no, I don't, I'm not gonna chance that. I do miss that blue rupee though. I got to feel 1 20th of the pain of all those people that told me that big green rupee fell into the endless abyss and they were never able to get it. Um, let me see if a bomb actually does deal with you. I, I mean, it shuts them off for a little bit actually. Wait, does it kill them? Is this thing not coming back? Oh no, it does come back. Okay, I was about to say, I, I thought you could stun them, just not kill them. That is a helpful tip, actually. Throw down that bomb, jump up here. Luckily, he wasn't looking in the correct direction. Push this down to stick the blade trap in the wall. Run around. And now we get the satisfying feeling of hearing the plink happen just a little faster each time. Yes! Look at the sparks flying. It'll dull itself down to nothing eventually. And it'll be so cathartic when it does a Helmarok plume! A new treasure and a reference to the Helmarok King from Wind Waker. And yeah, that's seven treasures out of eight. The eighth and final treasure we haven't found, I'm kind of glad is being saved for last. I think you'll understand when we do find that. Now we go down. And hearing some of you say that these dungeons felt a lot longer when you were a kid, and I, I kind of sympathize. I didn't think that all these dungeons would just kind of be one-parters and be over that quickly, but so it is. Um, and they also are really forgiving with the shortcuts. This is a shortcut to the shortcut back to the e entrance if you need to leave for any reason, kind of leaning this to being more of a portable experience that you can put down on a dime. Though personally, I just like sleep mode, and not just because of the puzzle that I really love. Uh, bring out my arrows once again, just kind of look around. That's another use of these projectiles, is that they let you look around, and if you just let go of the um, R button before, um, uh, or let go of the L or R button before, um, before letting go of the touch screen, then it doesn't cost you anything to look around. It's very, very quick and easy. Hop onto that. 
I'll get out my boomerang once more. One, two, three, and just do some other stuff for the heck of it. We're also seeing that they're using all of the items at once, and I'm a big fan of that, especially with how creative they got with adapting these items to the touchscreen. I'm very glad that we didn't just kind of have the items go used one time and then never again. I hit you. That's probably not going to do us any good to launch that. Launching it across the room. Is fancy and hits the switch. Doing it... No, hang on. Hitting it again. And then hitting it that way. Makes a treasure chest appear. Now, I want to do that again because I sw Wisdom gem. Nice. Nice indeed. Oh, you can do that. Nice. Doesn't show that it'll interact with it multiple times, but you can just draw loops and do it multiple times. Yeah, there was a chest over there. Huh. That's on that little itty bitty island there over by the moving platforms. I might have to go back for that a little, little bit later though, but I do want to make note of that and get it again. Okay, uh, Paul's voice! Hello, it's good to see you! What, not feeling well? Oh, I'm sorry. Talking loud's fun. I don't want to just snap my fingers. I'm sorry. It's just, it's, it, it's a curse, I'm afraid. Going up to the second floor. This right here is is really neat. Boing oing to move the floating platform, draw where you want. Draw a path on your map. It's mo if it's moving on a path you don't like, simply redraw the path. This is not quite like navigating on the open seas, but rather just drawing. Any which way you go, it'll do. I hope this doesn't do the wrong way because it's overlapping. Nope, it's fine. It actually gets things right pretty well. We go up, down, right, and left. It is the very order of the temple after all, and on the map it's just to the right of where we used that for the first and only other time. It's pretty impressive how it just knows what you were drawing and it hardly ever gets it wrong. Treasure chesty, boss key, and you know what that means? I'm going to point out yet again, because it's not at all getting old. <laughs> that we had to walk a whole one step back onto the block, and the block's just gonna carry us back over to where the boss door is, as you can see it on the map, and we don't even move at all with it at all, or have any additional challenge by having to carry it with us. It's just kind of an extra few seconds of weirdness. What's the ancient stone tablet say? Ponder the grand order of the whole temple and your path will become clear. Oh, that's nice if you come all this way and don't really have it worked out. It is time. Fill up on resources. Gee, it sure is lucky that we never found arrows in pots before we had a bow, otherwise they would have just gone to waste. There's our warp. Should it be needed? I don't think it is. Behind the stairs up to the boss is a hidden chest. I'm going to avoid it. The bomb, not the chest. Courage gem! One of each so far! Now it's time for our fight. <gasps> Crake, Bane of Courage. The boss is invisible, and it is done from a second person perspective where you see this from his point of view. You use that to shoot him in the eye to look and see where Link is in his point of view. It is such a cool and creative idea for a boss. This is such an interesting take on shooting the big giant eye by making them invisible and having to do it this way. He'll go through multiple cycles if you're not able to hit all of the purple points on him. These are Crake Lings, they are his minions, which are kind of a weird name. Oh, oh no, 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 I'm gonna kill my touch screen doing that, buddy. Um, now on phase two, that was actually a pretty short phase one. 
We're just gonna keep shooting until he blocks it with his claws, and then we can go around to the back, slash with our sword. Man, okay. That. Hit him. Oh, stuck it in his butt. Okay. <laughs> no, no, don't. <laughs> I can never think before I speak because I'm focusing on the game, okay? Either that or I just have no tact. Either of which would not surprise me and be totally realistic. Well, it is a quarter heart of damage, actually. Not really all that threatening in that way. I guess I just shook away really quickly, and that's it. It's short but it's such a creative idea for a boss and you will have to do a few cycles on that first phase if you're not knowing what to expect. So I did kind of make it look a bit easier than it would be to a first timer, but such a creative idea. I'm a huge fan of second person perspective boss fights. I loved the idea in Battletoads and I think it's even more creative here how you see through the eye that you're trying to shoot. I see them trying to be artsy and I approve. Got more sand for the Phantom Hourglass. Two minutes have been added. look just like me. What happened? Something seems weird. Something's odd, but... You got the spirit of courage. Maybe now you can find the ghost ship. Better eight than never, a new heart container. Feels good having a nice even number again. With the spirit of courage in tow, even though I picked it up with my hand. That is everything in the Temple of Courage, except for that one treasure chest. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go see what that is. Can I just walk up to it? No. Man, this thing didn't even put up a fight either. You guys are really bad at remembering what yourselves do. Go retrieve the crystal, put it back into the pedestal it was in in the first place, and that'll allow moving down into the depths which will then move back to the invisible pathway. By looking at the map and seeing that there is a platform down here, being observant, it is... a big green rupee, and not a tree in sight for it to be hidden behind. That's clever, makes you be more observant on the map, and I realized it a little bit late. And that's it for now. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we return to the village on Molita Island, and just kind of see where we can go from here. Maybe Linebeck will have some ideas. He always seems to. See you guys then.